Welcome to episode 525 of the Pittsburgh Nerd Podcast. I'm Sean. I'm Ian, and this is the only podcast that says... Blame Canada! Blame Canada! Let's get that shit under control, huh, Canada? It's crazy. I got wildfires in Canada, and I'm waking up with headaches down here. (coughs) Ian's coughing. Yeah, well, it's not helping my sickness at all. No. You are down with the sickness. Wah! Yeah. So. But yeah, fucking can't, like... What was it? Two days of, like... You know, though... What is happening? Because Canadian wildfires aren't something new. It's been going on forever. Right. This isn't... I mean, it's like wildfires in California. Yeah. I mean, like... <coughs> oh, sorry. Um, but, I mean, this isn't something new. I mean, I, I can remember... I don't remember any of this as a kid or even young adult. No. No. I can all. remember when the mill caught on fire in down off of Rome Mine. Yeah. Remember that? Oh, yeah. And uh, that messed up the city for a day or two. Yeah. And I remember when Mount St. Helens erupted. Do you yeah. remember that? Yeah. Everything turned yellow here. Do you remember that? Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was like such a massive eruption. The the ash cloud actually got this far. Yeah. Yeah. And it was like that for two days or something. Yeah. But this, I, you know, well, why, why are we noticing it? I don't know. I, I don't. I honestly don't. I mean, it's it's the oddest thing. I, I I would imagine the fire is that massive. Number one, like I don't. I think it. I haven't kept track of it, but I'm going to guess this is a an absolutely huge. You know, because I mean, I remember a few weeks ago, like when they were talking, like in New York, they were like, it looked like something out of like Silent Hill. Yeah, in I New mean, York City. Yeah, and like on Thursday, we had the worst air in the world or the country or something. Yeah. Like that. I'm like, what? I got. I mean, don't get me wrong. We're from Pittsburgh, so right. I mean, like, our people grew up in this type of environment every day. Yeah, that's what it was like every day. Right. For. But it also has fifty hasn't, years. Right, but it also hasn't been that way. No, in I, about forty years. No, I agreed. You know, what I mean, I, I agree with you. But, holy fuck! Yeah. Bad. You can taste the air. Yeah. I was like, bless me being sick. It's not helping. Yeah. Like when I was a kid, I I can remember going like, you'd wake up in the morning and you like, it tasted like rotten egg. Yeah. Or like bad. And it was because Claritin had, you know. Yeah. yeah. Let let something out. Yeah. And you're just like, oh, you could just, like, you just knew you were in for a, a bad day. Yeah, you I just... mean, I can remember going through Hazelwood and smelling that. Yeah. When I was a kid. Yeah. When the Hazel Mill, Mill was still running. Yeah. So, so yeah. I Every mean, but, time you went through Hazelwood, it smelled like that. Yeah. But now, I mean, it's been, I think it's been 40 years since. I mean, we get it here. Yeah. From Clareton and E.T., but. But not like this. Like th- th- this was like a. This is nuts. Yeah. <coughs> and I've never seen it in a code red. I've no. seen it in orange, but I've never seen code red and above. Yeah. Like we were in purplish range there. For yeah, me. it was it was crazy. I got, I woke up Thursday morning with like this. I, I couldn't get rid of the headache. Yeah. Like I just it, it was just like what in the hell? And I'm like looking outside like oh maybe that's the problem. Yeah. You know. The Google's telling me, like, not to go outside. But, you know, air's bad. Stay inside. Terrible. Yeah. Anyway. Ugh. So, how have you been? Last week was a daze. Yeah. I, was, I relapsed on this cold and was in fever for, like, three days. Yeah. I mean, off and on. I kept fighting it. Yeah. Just kept coming back. So that was a nightmare. 
truly. Yeah. So, I watched some stuff, but, like, I was in and out. Yeah. I did uh, finish The Bear, season two. Oh, okay. Superb. Yeah. Yeah. It deserves every 100% Rotten Tomatoes score. Yeah. Yeah, it is that good of a show. I've heard people rave about it. It is. That good. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's unbelievable. So, anyway, watch that. Jamie Lee Curtis and it was. Yeah. And she's going to win an Emmy. If she doesn't, I'll be shocked. Yeah. <coughs> but, <coughs> um, and she's only in like one episode, really. Yeah. But, uh, she was unbelievable. I have to say. I yeah. Mean, I always thought Jamie Lee Curtis was a good actor. And I think she is a good actor. Yeah. Do I think she's like a... Glenn Oscar. Coase, Mary Str- Meryl Streep. Yeah, no, I, d- I don't. No. And like, I don't think she considers herself that either. <clears throat> ever. I don't think that's ever came into her mind. Is yeah. being that. Right? Right. Um, but she's a good actress. And... Um, but this one episode, man... She just threw all her chops in and Yeah. Just, you know, dropped the mic. Seriously, yeah. at the end. Yes. Yeah. It was that good. The makeup was perfect. Yeah. It showed her wrinkles, her expressions. It's just, it's that good. It's this, this is a really good, uh, this is a really good show. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway. <clears throat> They haven't finished, so I'm not going to talk about it too much. But, um, yeah, so I finished that. Okay. Um, almost done with uh, Jack Ryan. I got to start on that. Um, I think that's it. I started a science fiction movie and realized it was fucking Bruce Willis and I just turned it off. Wow. I just... I mean, the few scenes that he was in, I was just like... Yeah. Yeah, I just... It was kind of heartbreaking, so I just yeah. didn't want to like... I get that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and I watched Strange New Worlds. Oh, that episode was fantastic. It just gets better and better. It does. <laughs> Say, hey. That was yeah, good. It was. And I was skeptical. As soon as they went, as soon as she landed, as soon as they landed on Earth, I'm like, come on. Yeah. Oh, Are we yeah. doing this fucking... This old this chestnut? Fucking, this this was like three chestnuts. Yeah. Burning on fire when, yeah. when I saw what happened. And I'm like, oh, here we go. Why don't you just, you know, you know, I, I was expecting the 1930s scene with the yeah. Tommy guns. Yeah. Because, you know, that's infamous. But uh, it actually turned out to be really, really, really good. Yeah. And some explanation in there. You know what I mean? Like a right. little bit more storytelling. Um, and for some reason, I had forgotten or didn't know that she was relative of Khan. You had forgotten because they've brought it up. Yeah, I must have forgotten. But, um, man, was it a good episode. It was. I mean, it was really, like, I really liked it because it, it played on a lot of different things. Like, it, it played on her past and her coming to grips with her heritage. Yeah. In a way. Um, I liked that it, like, the, the ripple effect of, like, Khan is such an important person to history that, like, if he's not a part of it, like, this changes everything in history going forward from his, yeah, you know, which was kind of an interesting thing. And then also, like, it, like, this little things, like, because it, it, 
it references and reinforces something that was like from Enterprise, like the the Scott Bakula show, uh-huh. where they like there was a lot that dealt with the temporal wars that were taking place that nobody knows about. Yeah, and like so to have like that brought up and like you find out the Federation at start some far flung future point has a temporal agency. Yeah. Like that was kind of like a cool like drawing that all together kind of kind of thing. Like there was a lot of things I liked about that episode, but I, I just thought I mean, especially when she sat down with Khan and <coughs> like it, 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 that was cool. Like I I liked that a lot. Yeah. I liked Kirk in it too. Yeah. It was real Kirk like. Yeah. Have a hot dog. Yeah. yeah. Kirk does right, but it but it was also like it was interesting because it's like a the thing I always like is this is twice now where they've brought in Jim Kirk, uh-huh. but in a way that it's like it's like his destiny is to be on that ship, right? But at the same time, like the first time they do it, like was with with Pike showing him. This is why you can't change your future because somebody else is meant to be on this bridge, not you, at this time. Yeah, and that's needed. But the but in this episode, like Kirk, it's Kirk's Enterprise, but yet it's a completely different timeline. Yeah. So like it, it, it was like interesting. Like it's like he's destined to be on that ship, and time keeps showing us that in an odd way. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I even like like the Romulan mean, at the end, like she talks about like time keeps pushing back, like time's kind of trying to correct itself. Yeah. Every time you change something, it's trying to correct something, correct it back the way it's supposed to be. That's kind of in, like, and one of those things time is always pushing towards is Kirk being on the Enterprise. Right. Right. You know. So that was like stuff like that. I find it. I found neat and interesting. He still has a while, a ways to go here right? before he gets on Enterprise. Well, I mean, in 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 their timeline, he's still Lieutenant Kirk. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, he <coughs> he got a few years before Pike's. Exit. Well, you know, well, I mean, I guess Pike will get promoted to Admiral, and that's when he has the accident. So when Pike is promoted, that's when Kirk will take the Enterprise. Accent. The uh, you know when he when he ends up in the the chair and you know the green dots yes, red dots, red red lights no. Like he's going to he's going to have that accident that maims him. And then that's the whole point of the Cage episode, the original Star Trek episode, is uh, Spock steals the Enterprise to take Pike back to that planet so that he can live his life thinking he's whole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With the woman he loves and everything else. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't think that's how they're going to play it out in this one. Well, they've already changed that timeline in the movie. No, they haven't. Well, not in this time. But he knows... He's already been shown he's going to have that accident. That was the whole point of the season finale last year was he was trying to find a way to prevent it. Yes, 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 yes. And it was like he was being shown this is why you can't prevent it. So it's not canon with the movies then? No, not the movies. Yeah, because Pike dies in the movies. Yeah. Yeah, no, and this... That was brutal. That was, that was brutal. Kirk? Yeah. And Spock? Seeing his last thoughts? Yeah, Jesus Christ. Yeah, but yeah, like it's a it, good it, episode. I mean, it not a episode, great episode. Yeah, that was a good scene. Yeah, but yeah, like the, in the in the original series, like that's the, the Cage episode is. Yeah, you know, yeah, 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 and I get it. I remember. Yeah, Man, just watching so many fucking Star Treks, I'm starting to lose my mind. Yeah, which Spock is coming out? Yeah. Which Spock are you? <laughs> I do like this Spock, though. I do. I like the guy playing Spock. Yeah, he's very good. Yeah. I like I saw an interview with him, and he said when he reads his scripts, he hears it in Leonard Nimoy's voice. Not oh, his really? own. 
Oh, really? Yeah. That's kind of cool. That is kind of cool. Because like, you figure as an actor, you have to have an ego, so when you're reading your lines, you have to read it in your own voice. And he says, no, I read it in, in Leonard Nain voice. Nice. That is nice. That'd be like me playing Batman and saying, well, I still hear it in Kevin Conroy. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. He's good. Yeah, he is. He's very good. So, yeah. So, that was good. I watched that. Did you watch episode two of the Secret War? No. Good? It is, yeah. I didn't get to it. Like... I heard everybody complaining about, like, you know, oh, it's so slow, and it's not what we're, you know, I, it's a six-episode series. Yeah. You know, and, you know, you're not getting everything all at once. Like, you know, this is a, 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 a pot boiler. Yeah. You know, this is a slow burn thriller. Yeah. You know, we're going to get pieces when they want to give them to us. You know, so, like, I've enjoyed it. You know, like it, this has been so far. This is one of my favorite Marvel series. Like you know, Hawkeye, you know, Falcon, Winter Soldier, and this is right now after two episodes. It's probably like my third favorite Marvel series. Yeah, nice. That and I did finish the first season of Silo. Silo, which it's on Apple, of course. The whole the whole concept of this show is. Something has gone wrong with the Earth, and we are in these, we're in this silo, what's left of humanity, all, all 10,000 of us. Okay. And, like, there are, it's like a few hundred levels down, and, you know, like, the closer to the top you are, the higher ranking you are, and the bottom is, like, that's where, like, the... the Maintenance, like that's where the generator is. That's where the, like the maintenance crews are and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, in the middle, there's like areas that are that, that, that you know they have grow lights, they grow crops, they have farm animals. That, you know, but it's like ten thousand people, like left on Earth, and they're all in this silo, <coughs> or, or are they? <coughs> you know, so like. These people will start come across this, you know, may, maybe what we're being shown isn't what's really out there. Yeah. Maybe that there is something else to it. Yeah. And they, um, this is what the kind of the whole thing is. Is like this girl, she gets promoted to sheriff because the sheriff went outside. Like, it's like punishment. If you say you want to go outside, then. You're going outside. Like, it's like a punishment. <laughs> and, like, they, they put you in these suits, but people, like, you know, you clean the camera, and then people die, like, outside. It's, like, so horrific out there. Like, even the suit can't protect you. So, but this girl, she was working with the sheriff to try to uncover what's going on. He goes outside. He, and his final request is that she become sheriff. She takes the job. And, of course, she's doing things... That nobody else wants to see happen, <coughs> and there's a conspiracy about. Like it's it's a very interesting show, and I will admit, I won't. I mean, I won't give it away in case you do want to watch this if you have access to Apple TV. But the ending of the first of the the final episode of the first season was one of the bigger what the fuck moments I've ever had. Okay. Nice. Like it really was. Like I was really like, what the fuck. Yeah, yeah. There was, but it's fantastic. Like I was, I can't wait for season two because I need answers. Okay. <coughs> so that was like the other thing I watched. I'm trying to think, it was I watched the making of season three of The Mandalorian. Hmm. I like it. I always like how they like, see how like like they talk about like. It isn't even so much like, like, like what brought them to like, okay, this is what the season's going to be. Like, how did it become like more focused on Bo-Katan than it was on Din Jarden? 
like, you know, what decisions were being made, listening to Katie Sackhoff talk about playing the character that yeah. she's played for a long time, but, like, in live action, it's completely different. Like, she talked about, like, going back and re-watching it because she wanted to see how the character moved so that she could replicate that. Yeah. Like, how she turns her head when she talks. Like, going back and watching an animated show so you can try to replicate that animated character is kind of a fascinating thing. And I feel like, I'm sure it's probably the same thing Rosario Dawson did, especially with, like, the mannerisms and stuff that Ahsoka has. Yeah. But it's still, like, this odd thing of, like... Because I'm thinking to myself, like, how do, why would you need to reference the character? You've, you've been playing the character. It's your character. Right. But it's not, in a way. Now she's making it hers in live action, which is kind of... That was kind of neat to, like, hear about. Yeah. And, of course, I'll take any opportunity to listen to, to the Bryce Dallas Howard talk. <laughs> Rosera Dawson, she's... She's had a good career. She has. Like, she really has. Like, it's just... I don't want to say it's a surprising career, but, like, some of the choices that she makes, like, you're just like, you know, wow. Like, being in Clerks 2 and Clerks 3. Like, to me, she was a big enough star that she didn't have, like, like, doing Clerks 2 was, like, a step (coughs) down for her. Yeah, because she had just done Rent. Yeah. That was a big part. I yeah, mean, for her. that was singing and dancing. Yeah, was everything. Yeah, you know, and she's doing Clerks too. Like you know, this little Kevin Smith movie. But apparently, she's a massive fan. Yeah. You know. And like also stuff like like Sin City. Yeah. Like you know, she's a self admitted nerd. Yeah. Like you know, she loves comic book stuff. She loves comic book. I mean, I mean, she was a night nurse. You know, she loved playing that. Yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah. Good career. Yeah, she, she has had a good career. That and... Uh, I think that's it. I do have some sad news to report. Hmm. Big Chuck took a spill. What? Yeah, apparently last Sunday, he was taking one of the dogs out. And there was another lady with a dog coming by, and the dog took off, and Dad was holding the leash, and got dragged on, and apparently broke his arm. Ooh, got all fuck. busted up. Wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Like he, like he broke like his. Uh, I want to say it's a humerus. Broke that, and they're like, you know, he's gonna see an orthopedic surgeon on Sunday, see if they're gonna have to do surgery on that. Yeah. So, uh, keep my keep my dad in your thoughts. You know, T's and P's, if you will, please. Yeah. Whatever it is you believe in, good vibes, whatever you do. Huh. But yeah, yeah. So I went to go visit him to Thursday. It was rough. Like I don't know if it's the pain. Like he just he looked he didn't look comfortable. Which I mean, he's got a broken arm and he's all bruised up and you know. But he like. <coughs> he was kind of fidgety a little bit and he kind of got up and he sat back down and he was, wasn't his normal self. And I kind of, I kind of felt that. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, that sucks. Yeah. So that was that. What happened to the dog? He held on to the dog. Did he? Yeah. With a broken arm. Yeah. Jesus. But apparently, like, the other dog, French Fry, saw what happened. And went full lassie mode and woke up people. Like, let them, alerted them that something was wrong. Really? Yeah. It was, like, really impressive. Like, like wow. Okay, yeah. He, this is really he, he went full lassie mode there. That's impressive. Yeah. And, uh, it's like, apparently, because it was early morning, and apparently woke up my sister and my mom. And then my sister came downstairs, and then she looks out, and there's my dad laying on the ground. It was all out of sorts, and they had to rush into the hospital. Huh. Yeah. And the dogs just took off on him, or what? Well, I mean, Vader's an asshole. He's a good dog, don't get me wrong, but he's an asshole. And so, it was like one of those deals where, like, you know, 
this lady's come along and she's got her, got her dog on a leash and, you know, Vader goes after it. My dad's holding on to the leash, got it around his wrist and shit and, hold, and you know, I guess Vader just got him, yanked him down and dragged him. Jesus. Yeah. What'd the lady do? I don't know. I guess she took off. What the fuck? Yeah. Who does that? I guess somebody's protecting their little dog. <coughs> Jeez. Yeah. So. So yeah, that's a. That was a. That's enough. Yeah, that was my Thursday. Hmm. And Friday, Friday was Nancy's birthday. So I went out. To celebrate by myself. I went to Jim's Hot Dogs. Nice. Yeah. Well, I, w- I went out. I was going to get her a cake and stuff. And uh, she was doing something. So I had time. And I was like, well, I'm going to get myself something to eat. I'm, like, I'm in the mood for a hot dog. <laughs> I don't want to go to Sheets. I don't want to go to Get Go. Thought about going to Dairy Queen. And I thought, fuck it. I'm going to Jim's. <laughs> I went to Jim's. And I got a. Two cheese dogs with sauce and onion and some french fries. Oh, it was delicious. <laughs> oh, it was so good. Oops. I gotta go out there more often. I want, like, <coughs> the problem is I'm never, like, I'm never that way at all. But I'm very rarely in West, in, like, that side of town, like West Mifflin. Yeah. Why would you be? Yeah. So, like, it's like, I'm gonna go out of my way, but it's worth going out of my way. Because that shit is so fucking good. You know? Yeah. I had... Because they all went to a concert last week. Yeah. Right? Yeah, last yeah. weekend. Yeah, they were... They were went to go see The Cure in Maryland. Yeah, and they were like... Arm's length away from... Yeah. Um... So one day I ordered a steak hoagie. Yeah. From the penis. Okay, yeah. I like their steak hoagies. Yeah. I like, because I like their bread. They make their own bread. Yeah. And it's, their steak hoagies are good. Yeah. So I got a steak hoagie. And then on Monday, I, I got a sub from that Glad's Deli. Yeah. And it's a new deli that yeah. opened up in. It was really good. I've heard nothing but good things about that place. Like yeah. every thing, single person I've talked to, or, or I know, like on my timeline, has been like, "Glad's Deli's amazing." It, it is. Yeah, I think part of the secret is they use Breadworks bread. Yeah, and Breadworks is a re- it's really good bread. Yeah, um, it is especially right. for hokies. Yeah, um, it's very similar to. Sort of the bread is similar to it, Jimmy John's. Yeah, it's like kind of a little bit hardish on top. Yeah, a nice little crust. Yeah, yeah. So, um, but soft. You know yeah. what I mean? Like really good. So I, I, I got two hoagies, two halves, because Bree and I, we split it. Yeah. I got a turkey and roast beef, and a and I got just the the Italian. Yeah. yeah. And. Uh, I said, you know, what, what, what do you want on it? You know, I, you know, lettuce, tomato, no onions. Nobody eats onions. And uh, I was curious on what kind of onions they were going to put on it. Yeah. But I... Not curious enough. Not curious enough. I should have asked. I was like, yeah. do you put red onion on it or do you put the fucking... Diced white. Diced white. Because if you put red on it, then... You're, yeah. You're a master. But... I didn't ask, so. Um, I just feel like white onions take over a sandwich, if they're raw, especially. Yeah. You know. And I said, lettuce, tomato, and dressing. You yeah. Know, for the Italian. Right. And then just for the roast beef, just, you know, lettuce, lettuce tomato. Right. And, uh, man, I felt like I was carrying a. 10 pounds. Look at, the, look at the Carlos Hoagie. 
No. Okay. Because I think the Carlos is mostly Brett. It is, yeah. And I don't think there's a lot of meat on a De Carlos heavy. There is a lot of meat, don't but, get me wrong, but the meat to bread ratio is still heavy to the bread. Yeah, it's just I mean, so they do, much fucking bread. It is. It's a lot of bread. I I can't deny that. But they, they do put a good bit of meat, and it's it's very good meat. Um, yeah. Like, you know, Nancy's mom, Chicky, was the only woman to ever defeat the meat to bread ratio by going to double meat. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. A little hitchhiker there. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, she uh, she went double meat, and they were like, ma'am, I don't think you understand. And we're even talking, like, there's a lot of meat on this. I'm like, no, 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 you give me double she's meat. She's like, fuck you, I'm six months from death. <laughs> yeah, and well, she, they handed her the... <laughs> You're going to be mean. Uh, I am sorry, uh... He apparently felt the uh, the revenge of Jim's drive-in hot dog. Anyway. Anyway, what were you even talking about there? Gladstone. Huh? Gladstone. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so I get it home. They put the Italian dressing in a fucking little container for me, not on the sandwich, which I liked. So I can add my own. Right. Is that baked or unbaked? Unbaked. Unbaked, okay. Wrapped in paper. Because the only time I like it with the dressing is if you bake it. No, it doesn't matter to me. Like it does, I'm, I'm not a huge fan of Italian dressing to begin with, but like if you put it on the, like the bread and you bake that <clears throat> for a couple minutes and get it yeah. toasted, then I feel like yeah. it kind of works better than if you just kind of throw some dressing on some yeah. bread. It feels kind of wet to me. Yeah, I mean, there was, it was just, you know, good meats. Yeah. A lot of meat. Lot yeah. Of cheese. Some more to dull in there. It was uh, really good. I yeah. was I was pretty impressed. I was like, wow. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I'd rather pay the extra $3 and get a large. Yeah. Not even that. I think the large Italian was like 13 i I'd rather pay that than get a Subway. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, Subway's price has just skyrocketed. And, like, if I'm going to get a hoagie, I'm, I'm just going to get a hoagie from them. Yeah. You know? Oh, yeah. I think both halves were like eight bucks or something like that. Yeah. I don't know. It's something like that. But I like it. The tomatoes were shaped real thin. I love that. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's good hoagie. Good. Yeah, I've heard nothing but good things about that place. Yeah. But I think the secret is that bread works bread. Yeah. So I looked. Yeah. I was trying to see where the bread was coming <clears throat> from, and I yeah. saw the bread works package. Hopefully that's what they're using. Yeah. I mean, you know what I mean? Right. I mean, if it's something else, I want to know what it is, but... Yeah. You know. But, yeah. It was good. Good hoagie, man. Good. Loved how it was wrapped in paper, and I put home in the paper yeah There's something about that you know? I get that yeah seriously I yeah. don't know what it is but no I understand that that makes sense to me I feel like I'm getting a real sub yeah you know yeah so. like from a deli yeah 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 so yeah it was pretty cool basic inside too you had like three tables a TV yeah. nice and clean though and uh, a couple pot coolers you know, they got their Turner's tea. They did. They have Turner's yeah. tea there, and they also have like Pepsi and Coke. And, yeah, you know, like they even had you know Starbucks frappuccinos. You know, the cold drinks. And right. Stuff. Yeah, it was pretty cool. But I mean, that's just like, like oddly, that's like a, a Glassport staple. Is like a Fuzzy's hoagie and a Turner's tea. Yeah. So, like to me, like if you're going to compete with Fuzzy's, which is what they're doing. Then you need Turner's tea. Yeah, I, I think that. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, you know, I mean, you but just I mean, need to. I don't know. I hope they stick around because I just felt like you know. Yeah. It was good. It's something good. 
Yeah. You know. No, I agree. Um, they were originally supposed to go in the Kessler's location. Yeah. Up in Liberty. Yeah. But something happened, I guess. Yeah, that's what I heard. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that'd be a cool place to have a fucking sub shop. To turn that into us. A... That's a big place, too. Yeah, I mean, you can have a real deli. Yeah. You know? Well, yeah, they have like 10 or 15 tables in there. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because I mean, they were a full-on restaurant, plus... I didn't know that. Yeah. I didn't know they were a pharmacy slash restaurant. Isn't it Kessler's Drugstore? I, uh, I think there was a drugstore on one side. I don't know. Yeah, I think there was a drugstore on one side, and on the other side they had like a... Diner or something? Yeah, like a, like a malt shop almost. Where like they had like, that's sick, like the homemade milkshakes. I, I think it was like, like kind of like the one down on Walnut Street, like where they have like the, the co- yeah, Ayers, where they have like the counter, where you still get like the homemade milkshakes and stuff. Mm. I think, but I think they separated the drugstore from the counter. Yeah, and the counter just expanded. I see. Where they were like, I mean, I knew people who would like go there for lunch. You know, like that was like you know, and that's a cool. Yeah. What a novel idea to yeah. bring that back. Yeah. Yeah, it would be. In today's market, it'd probably f- fly. I think the only problem with that, I think the same problem they're going to run in there is parking. But I mean, if, if, well, if yeah. yeah. But I mean, if you're just like a three table setup, I mean, you're, you're looking at to go orders mostly. Oh, yeah. But still. But I'm saying like. I'm not talking about what I do on them. I'm like, yeah. for anybody opening up a yeah. shop like that. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's like niche. Yeah, it How is. How many places do you know that have, you know, stuff like that? I mean, there was only two that I knew of, and one of them shut down right now. Well, it's similar to how Murphy's used to be. Yeah. You know? Oh, yeah. You know? Like, you saw your food cooking right there. Like the flat, right. all the no. everything's in front of you. Right. Yeah. I I, I agree. Like it was the same way like what Kmart used to be. Yeah. You know, you sit down at the counter. Guy took your order, cooked up your food right in front of you. Yeah. You know. Plus with a soda and malt shop. Yeah. But I like that too because it's like I don't know because I can remember, believe it or not, I can remember going to Murphy's with mom and getting it. Yeah. In order. I oh was yeah. Probably like Four, five, right, and uh, where else did I have that besides the cave work? I cannot remember. I know I've I've sat down at a place like that. Maybe it was Isley's before they all closed down. Yeah, I don't know. Like well, the there, there used to be that Isley's in McKeesport. That, that was there for a long, long time. Huh? There used to be that Isley's in McKeesport. Yeah. It was there for a very long time. Yeah. Like, they were, like, one of the last ones to shut down. Then there was an Isley's in East McKeesport. Yeah. In the shopping center right there. Yeah. That's the only ones I remember. I remember there being one in West Mifflin down the road from Jim's. Like where where the Y is? Oh, really? Yeah, I used to be an ISC, I think. Oh, really? Yeah. And then it became a Unimart. Of course, of course. But um, yeah, I, there's something about that, you know, sitting down and cooking your food right there. D's is like that. Yeah. There used to be. I don't know what it's like now. But yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's a neat concept. I don't know. I don't know why. No, it is. You're right. I, I agree with you. It is a neat concept. Like, you know, just like... Like back in the 50s, you know? Yeah. I, mean? I think that's the neatest thing. Yeah, I mean, like, when you walk into air, it's just like walking into a time fucking machine. Yeah. You know? <clears throat> Going to get your 39-cent hamburger and soda. Yeah. Maybe a milkshake. Yeah. That's where it's at. I mean, like, it's shut down, but they still had the stuff in there. Like, they had the cologne counter. 
<coughs> like, I, that one time I went in there, like, they, the, the Cologne counter was still, like, it was, like, but it, it was shut down, but, like, they still, like, high karate in there and shit. <laughs> like, it was, like, the weirdest fucking thing. Like, it was, like, this just this odd, like, time capsule of, like, what f- things were like in, like, the 70s. I remember going to... I swear Gene's shop used to have that, too. I think he still had to, like, you know, ask the pharmacist for condoms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. Yeah. Like, I mean, like... <coughs> it's an odd thing. <coughs> to think about, but, like, it's... there was a time where, like, that's what you had to do. You had to, you know... Yeah, like, like to purchase condoms. You know. Yeah. You know, so where, like, now you just kind of walk into Walmart and pick yourself up a 12-pack. Yeah, you yeah. Know? But back then, that was, like, a big deal. Different time. Yeah. Pharmacists have a conversation with you about the use of condoms. Like, you know. I know where I had that fucking open girl. Was it, uh... I think it's changed now, possibly. But it wasn't too long, that long ago, but... Mom went into Forbes for something. Yeah. And Forbes... Oh, gift they shop. Had, they had that, yeah. Had their little... Yeah. Uh, set up there. Okay, yeah. And I got a fucking burger and fries there. Top notch. I could imagine, yeah. That would be cool. Yeah. Yeah. It was really cool. Sat down, had my burger and fries, had a yeah. soda drink. Yeah, it was cool. That place was cool. Yeah. That's a throwback. And she's like, oh, yeah, honey, sure. <laughs> Threw that shit on the flat top. Yeah. Covered that shit with a pot lid. I'm like, man, I'm in business. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Squirt some water on there to melt the cheese. Back with the pot lid. Good stuff. It was. Kmart, though. Toward the end, man, that shit hadn't been cleaned for years. No, I mean, like, there, 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 but there was a time, where, like, at the height, like, it was, like, a big deal. Like, you know, I don't want to say a big deal, but it was, like, you know, you, know, you were getting, like, you know, ham and cheese sandwiches there, like, you know, off the grill. Yeah, yeah. You know, like, like the, the, the Kmart flat top was a big deal. Like, yeah, you know, yeah. And it changed over, you know, you know they they were selling Little Caesars pizza. They were, you know, whatever they could to keep the fucking thing open. Yeah. But, but I mean, like, there was a time where, like... Kmart just turned into a trash store. Yeah. I mean, every time you went into the motherfucker, it was trashed. Yeah. Just absolutely trashed. Yeah. Trashed. There was, like, fucking shit everywhere. Yeah. Open boxes. And it was fucking madness. Kmart was madness. It was. At the end. The one there and the one in on 51. Yeah. Just insanity. Yeah. And I never went in. I I never liked going to Kmart much at all. Yeah. Now, the one that gets romanticized is Hills. Yeah. The Hills snack bar gets very romanticized. It stunk, though. That smell when you walked into fucking hills, I was made nauseous. Because I mean, the snack bar was just it was like it was like popcorn. And they had like you know they had a roll like hot dogs on a roller. Yeah. They they had like you know, I I think they had uh, slush puppies. Cotton candy. Cotton candy. Cotton candy. Pizza slices. Probably. Yeah, I probably like it, but it was like, it's like so romanticized. But like to me, it's like. The most overrated. <laughs> Don't tell that to the guy that's going to have a food truck. Yeah, I know. I, but I, that's what I mean. Like, it's, <laughs> it's like so romantic. Like, Hill, Hills' department store was fantastic. Like, I can remember, like, the downfall of Hills hurt me. Because I, I did my clothes shopping, my, my toy shopping. Like, yeah. you know, as a kid, that was, like, the place to go for, for shit. You know? And... But, like, the snack bar aspect of Hills, like, it's, like, so romanticized by people. And I'm just, like, that was probably its weakest link. Yeah, I never really got anything from the snack bar ever. No, neither did I. But, like, what do, like what doesn't get romanticized, like, you know, you could go to Hills and you could get yourself a slush puppy. You had a couple of quarters. You could play the Ninja Turtle game. Yeah. You know, it was shit like that that was, like, cool about Hills on top of, like, you know, I got my Lee jeans there. I got my, uh, my, my, my t-shirts there. Like, you know, that's where I went school clothes shopping. Yeah, yeah. You know? 
and then you know the downfall of hills led to Ames and Ames was just fucking awful yeah but like that hill snack bar just gets so romanticized and I'm just like man that was that was like his weakest link yeah I'm sorry yeah it wasn't that great no it wasn't the GC Murphy counter. It wasn't. It wasn't the Kmart counter. No, nah, it was just some miserable bitch behind the. <laughs> yeah, you know, hate hating everybody. Yeah, smoking cigarettes. Yeah, yeah. To me, I thought. I thought. Maybe I was just a kid, but I. I swear, some of the best hot dogs I ever had was at Eastland. Oh, well, they had Wiener World. Yeah. Oh. Wiener World was the shit. <coughs> Yeah, I mean, that was, I mean, I I couldn't tell you, I, can, I mean, I can remember it being a great hot dog, but I couldn't tell you what it was like now, but like, Wiener World, I remember that. Like, that was like, With your dog and right, the paper, the paper yeah. holder. Oh, yeah. The condiments right there. Yeah. It's good stuff. Every time we went to Eastland, we got on. Yeah. It was like right in the middle of the mall, it was massive. Yeah, I know. It was like great. Yeah. We would like to see Eastland in its heyday. Oh, yeah. I don't remember. I don't either. Like, I mean, I remember Eastland, but I don't remember in its heyday. Like, its heyday was before I can remember. Yeah. Yeah, I don't remember the heyday. No. But they but, had... like, but its heyday was an open air mall. Was it? Yeah, it was. Like they, they, I've read where like you know it was open air and then they put a roof on it later on. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, I wonder why. I don't know. But that was one of the things. It was like an, it was an open air mall. Oh, I didn't know that. Because I remember like the roof was like <coughs> a tin. Yeah. Like a tin roof. Yeah. Or a metal roof. Yeah. It's like when it rained and stuff. It was loud in there. Yeah, it was. But I guess I didn't have any idea that it was a... Uh... Yeah, it was open air originally. Oh, how neat. Yeah. Makes sense the way the stores are designed. Yeah. Were designed. Yeah. Yeah, I thought it was a cool place, man. I would like to see it in its heyday. Yeah. Busy and bustling and... Yeah. You know, and then you went across the street to the theater. It's yeah. right there. Walk, walk to... Perfect, yeah. perfect walking distance to the theater. Yeah, yeah, that's a shame. Yeah, I, I mean, at least I thought it was a shame. Yeah. And then these big malls just put them out of business, and we're gonna look at these big malls now. Why well, the other side of it too was it was just in a shitty location. Yeah, I guess you're right. I mean, honestly, it, it really was. If you look at where that mall was located, yeah, I mean, it was really only serving like. McKeesport, North for Sales. Maybe he came up from Braddock. Or, or, um, Wilmerding. Yeah. Churchill. Yeah. You know, like, in that but, kind of group. But it was, like, off the main, like, it was off the beaten path, too. Yeah. Like, it, like, at least, like, Century 3 Mall, like, had 51 running in front of it. Yeah. Or Monroeville Mall has 22. Like Those are major veins. This was like off of Route 30. Yeah. Down the road, down the hill and up and, you know. Yeah. You know, it, it, it was in an odd spot that, like, from a traffic standpoint, it just didn't have the traffic going to it. Nah. Still, it had a gimbals. Yeah. That was big. Yeah. Probably because they wouldn't let gimbals in McKeesport. Yeah. That's probably why they put gimbals there. Yeah, probably. But still, like, if you look at it just from, like, that standpoint of, like... Yeah, no, I get it. You know. I mean, Cox wouldn't let anybody in. No. In McKeesport. No. That was his town. Yeah. And that was sort of a down... Not... wasn't the downfall of McKeesport by any means. No. But it was a small factor, I'd say. Well, I mean, like... What's I mean, the- McKeesport was big enough to have, at one time, it was big enough to have, like, a Kaufman's. And yeah. It was almost bigger than Pittsburgh. Yeah, but, I mean, like, once the mill shut down, like, yeah, everything still- else kind of, the dominoes kind of fall, fell with it. Oh, yeah, for sure. Very quickly. Oh, yeah, for sure. There's no denying. Yeah. I'm, 
I'm not saying that. Right, I understand that. I'm just saying, like... But, and it's prime time. Yeah. During those, what, 50, 60 years there. Yeah. Uh, Macy's or Kaufman's could have been in McKeesport. Easy. Right. Because a lot of people went to McKeesport before they even went. They didn't venture to Pittsburgh unless they were Christmas shopping. Yeah. And they wanted something from the bigger store. Right. But, like, I just, I feel like, 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 that was something that, like, smaller towns like that would have been known for. Like, you know, they had their own department store. You know, they had, like, you know, but you also had, like, Jason's and you had, uh, Greens. Greens, and yeah. you had Murphy's down the, the street. Yeah, I mean... Yeah, I mean, that, that, like, Fifth Avenue Cox's, had... Cox's, you had Byers, you yeah. had Helmsteaders. Yeah. Helmsteaders was big. Yeah. Now, I know a lot of people don't think it's big now, but back then it was huge. Yeah. And the reason being, I, I think, mostly was a lot of it was millware. Millware. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that's what he pimped out of there. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, mill clothes. Yeah. yeah. Or working clothes. Yeah. But those, like, two blocks, like, you, you didn't need Gimbel's or Kaufman's or Macy's or anything like that. Like, those two blocks were doing just fine. Yeah, those two blocks were good. I'd say three. Yeah. Well, three from our memory. Yeah. I mean, like, when Mom talks about it, you're talking like six square. Yeah. Like it was all like that. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Right. Like there was business all the way fucking down. Right. To the hospital. Right. You also had the McKee Sporter, ho- the, McKee ho- the McKee Hotel. You had the Palisades was doing business. You had, you know, the movie theater. Yeah. The end of, well, not the independent. Uh, fuck. Mom worked there. They had, yeah. they had the memorial. Yeah, the memorial. And then there was another one. Yeah. I think there was three. Yeah, I think so. I think there was an opera house, too. Yeah, I think so. Like, yeah, I mean... I mean like, it was, like, crazy. Yeah. Like, like... Like, that's the thing that people don't understand. Like, when, like it's this funny thing. Like, when you look at McKeesport today, you don't understand, like, how rich that history is. Mm. Like, you know, you talk about, like, you know, Millionaire's Row. Like, that's where, like... All the wealthy people lived, and like they were le- like legit wealthy people with these mansions that are now like crumbling and you know just from decay and yeah. falling apart. And like it, it, it was like <coughs> there was a time where McKeesport was this king of the country. Yeah, like the biggest blast furnace in the United States. Yeah, people were going to like bands would play mm. in Pittsburgh, and then it come to McKeesport to party. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, you heard the stories of, like, you know, these big artists were, you know, coming to McKeesport to hang out after they did a show in in Pittsburgh. (coughs) So, (coughs) it it was the place to be in a lot of ways. Plus, you had Renzi, you had the Renzi dances, you had Renzi pool. I mean, there was, it was, I'm sure, back in... You know, forties. Those forty years, forty through. I'll just say eighty, but yeah, that was a decline. But um, I, I, I'm sure those forty years were magical. Yeah, like forty to forty, forty. You know what I mean? Forty yeah. to eighty. Yeah, I'm sure they were magical back in the tens and twenties. But we were going through the depression too. Right. I'm sure, it wasn't that great during the depression. Right. But. But that time period, man, I'm telling you, I would have loved, I would love, if I, I would, if I can go back in time, I would love to go back into that time of hustle and bustle. Yeah. And just see this craziness. Because you see, like, the pictures from, like, like 1948 McGeesport. Yeah, and the train ran, ran right through the center of town. Yeah. But you could see, like, people just 10 deep on each side. Yeah. I mean, there were so many fucking people down there. It was like New York. Yeah. Like a mini New York within like a six block radius. Yeah. It was so weird. It was just, it's just so weird to look at those pictures. Yeah. Do you it know is. what I mean? Oh, it is. I agree. I'm like, 
and you gotta say, man, this is this is where I came from. But yeah. I experienced the worst parts of Mickey's Pool. Yeah. You know, it's a shame. But also down there, you had, I mean, there was a Burger King, there was a McDonald's, there was a fucking Baskin Robbins, there was a Johnson the Florist, there was. So oh, yeah. And that's just from my memory. That's those yeah. are the la- those were the last men standing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But there was just so much down there. Water fountains, and ornate, you know, lighting and parades. And yeah. It's just, it's just sad. It is. I agree. It is. One hundred percent is. Yeah. Sad to see a decline of. I don't know. Yeah. Just forgotten about. Yeah. yeah. Then you get to Renzi and, and you look at the archaeological finds there, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like that stuff, I mean, I can't even imagine in like 1952, say, driving, I mean, because that was, you know how they drove the strip in, uh, yeah. in uh, the movie? American Graffiti. Yeah. Yeah. That was the strip. That, yeah. that walnut was the strip. Yeah. Well, not, that not walnut. Um, Eden Park Boulevard. Eden Park Boulevard. That was the strip. That's where they did their... Yeah. That's where the cars came out. And, yeah. And then they would turn up and go by Renzi and do yeah. that loop and go yeah. back around. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, that was what you did, you know? Yeah. I would love to go back in time like that and check oh, yeah. that out. Yeah. It's so badass, dude. Yeah. You know? Seeing everything lit up. Yeah. Just a time of... A time of progress. And yeah. People making a living and caring about their community. Yeah. You know? It's good shit. It was. Now it's fucking... Disaster's end. It is. <laughs> and it's crime ridden. Yeah. And look at 10th. Yeah. Man, 10th Ward is just... You, well, go, you go through there through the detour, you're like... Yeah. What in the world? You know? Yeah. It's like worse than some of the bad streets. Yeah. You know, the, the decomposing streets of McKeesport. Yeah. It's like, man. Whatever. There's a stink bug in this house. <laughs> there certainly is. And I've named it. <laughs> I'm just... I'm waiting. Uh, hopefully this... The, the, the wait takes a while. If that egg has a shell on it. <laughs> I hope so too. <laughs> Anyway, so what's going on? What, what do we got? What are we um, talking about? Like we're like, I feel like we're 80 years old tonight. That's how yeah. I feel. Yeah, we're a couple of old men reminiscing about a time we didn't even experience. We didn't even experience. Yeah. Well. Just through pictures. Yeah. So they're, they're, normally I don't, I don't get into casting news, but I found this to be interesting. So the first bit is the long just dating Tron 3 okay. has picked up steam apparently begins shooting this the end of this summer yeah. with Jared Leto still attached and now they've announced they've confirmed that Evan Peters will be also be part of this cast wow yeah Evan Peters and Leno in yeah. Tron? In Tron, yeah. Now, I mean, nobody knows what this is going to be. Nobody knows how it links to the the, the original and the sequel. Yeah. It will, uh, you know, or is it going to be like its own complete, like, let's just completely reboot this franchise that we... I hope he's okay after playing Donna. Yeah. But, um... 
So how did you method act for Dawn? <laughs> yeah. We ate raw steak for a long time. Um. So yeah, I I just I find it interesting that this has kind of picked up steam again. Like, this is like I've get kind of I've kind of given up. Like, Tr- I'll never see Tron three. Yeah. You know, like you know, when you have Jared Leto attached to it, I was like, yeah, I don't know. You know, but apparently, apparently he's very strongly like into this. Okay. Like to stay attached to it this long. Yeah. You know he. I think he's a nerd. Like I don't like the stuff he talks about when it comes to himself is like, wackadoo shit. Mm. But the things I know is, <coughs> I, I. I know he tried to be Superman. I know he tried to be Green Lantern. I. You know, he ended up doing the Morpheus movie. There was something else in there he, he, he wanted to do, but they he didn't make the cut for. I mean, he was the Joker. You know, so I, he's... he's <coughs> if there's one it was thing a good I, joke. Yeah. I mean, we're not going to go on that at all. I'm yeah. not. I, good joke. Same, yeah. same um, so he, he's tried out for a lot of, like, superhero stuff over the years, which I find interesting, because, like, like, unless you, like, have, like, a connection to it, like... Why are you like other than it being like like hey yeah, these are usually cash cows, like why why would you be like really trying to attach yourself to them? So here's like another sci-fi nerd property that apparently he's very into, that he's attached himself to and is is definitely a part of, and I find that very interesting. Yeah, that's kind of cool. It is, and I mean Evan Peters, like I mean, Damn, son, he's he's just a very good actor. Oh yeah. Like there's no two ways about that. You know what I mean? Like I I'm not going to sit here and like be like Evan Peter. Ugh. You know, no, he's a very good actor. Like oh, yeah. the stuff that he's done over the years, like you you can't deny. Like even like his Quicksilver. Yeah. Uh, uh, fantastic. Yeah. Outside like the special effects, I thought like the way he played the character was very good. Yeah. You know. So <coughs> I don't know. I like this special effects. Oh, I mean, I do too. Yes, I'm. I'm just saying, like the, like the, but, like it's that time in a bottle scene. Yeah. Well, like both of them, like in, in both in, in first or in uh. Days of Future Past, and then in. Um. Um. Apocalypse. Apocalypse. Like, those two scenes, those speedster scenes are amazing. Yeah, well, same yeah, whatever but, it could from right. Apocalypse. But at the same time, I liked the way he played the character. Like, you could say, like, those two scenes are amazing, and they are, and you can't deny the special effects involved with that, but I liked the way he played the character. Yeah. You know, he's a, just a very good actor overall. I agree. And then... James Gunn has confirmed that David Cornsweet and Rachel Brosnan <coughs> are going to be playing Superman and Lois Lane in Superman Legacy. Now, I I looked up both of them in IMDb. They neither of them have been in anything I've really seen. Okay. Um, maybe that's a good thing. Yeah. Rachel Brosnan, though, she was apparently in The Marvelous Miss Mabel. Okay. Which was a, a series on Amazon uh-huh. that I know received a lot of kudos. Yeah. So, as actors, I don't know anything about them. Okay. But I do know this. He definitely looks like Henry Cavill, and they both definitely look like Superman. <laughs> like, that, there, there's a picture of them. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I look at that guy and I'm like, oh, yeah, that's Henry Cavill. <laughs> you know? Like, I honestly, like, looked at that first and I was like, that's just Henry Cavill. <laughs> but, like, and I love that somebody said this on Twitter. They're like, somebody was making a joke, like, when you say you, you want Henry Cavill and your mother says we have Henry Cavill at home. And I, like, they're p- putting up pictures of the two of them. <laughs> And somebody said, it's not that Henry Cavill looks like, or this guy looks like Henry Cavill. 
It's that Henry Cavill and this guy both look like Superman. Yeah. 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 You know what I mean? That's like, that's like, okay, that's nice. I like that. Yeah. But I'm not going to sit here and say like, oh, I can't believe they cast this guy. I can't believe they cast her. I, I don't know anything about them. Yeah. You know, so I am intrigued to see. Maybe he didn't want anybody huge. I'm sure he did in that spot. I mean, if you re- if you really look at it, I'm gonna start fresh. Since Reeves, since yeah. Christopher Reeves, Christopher Reeves was a nobody when he got cast. Yeah. Because Richard Donner felt the most important thing was you don't see the actor in the costume. You see Superman in the costume. Yeah. So he cast a nobody as Superman. Yeah. So when Singer does Superman Returns, he's casting somebody that nobody's ever really heard of to be Superman because, again, he's going by the same philosophy. Yeah. Now, I don't know if that's what Schneider believed in as well. But, like, I mean, I know that Cavill had been in a few things, most prominently... um, that gladiator was it Spartacus that was on uh, Stars? Who? Sp- Henry Cavill. I don't know. He he was on he was on a gladiator show on Stars. I know that. He was in Spartacus. Yeah. That was my understanding. I don't know. I'm yeah. guessing these. She yeah. watched it. But I got I never watched it, so I don't know. So like again, like I was just like, well, I hope this guy can act. Yeah. Like so. To me, like, all three of those guys were nobodies. Yeah. Like, the only person who's ever been, like, I'm going to cast a, a known actor as Superman it was Tim Burton when he was going to put Nicolas Cage in the suit. Right. You know, outside of that, like, nobody else has gone, like, the known actor out <coughs> because you want them to see Superman. You don't want to see the actor. Yeah, no, I get it. You know, so, like... I'm going to hold my judgment until I see this cat portray Superman. Sure. You know, same, same thing with the actress. You know, Margot Kidder is a tough act to follow. You know, and I don't think either of the actresses that have, that have been after Margot Kidder, like, I, I think Amy Adams is okay, but, like, neither of them gave me, like, that Lois Lane vibe. I didn't read the comic book, so... Right. I don't know how... I don't know. It's just, it's a tough... Margot Kidder... I didn't like Margot Kidder. You Superman. didn't? I see, I did. It just... The whole flying scenes bothered me in Superman. Just even as a kid. Oh, not me. I, that's magic. When she's holding on to him, yeah. I get it. Hold on to me. Who's holding you? Yeah. yeah I, I get it. That's a good line. And I, I yeah. get it. Yeah. But when but, they're when she's in her fucking furry lingerie, you know. Yeah. You know, yeah. like like a fucking Victoria's Secret pterodactyl. I, I can't, wow. I can't. I I I couldn't get into it. I found it romantic. That was an awful scene. Okay. I, I get your room. I guess how you. I guess I get how you. I can get your how you romanticize it, but it just looks so fake that I. I can't even. I, yeah. I, I just can't wrap my. I couldn't even wrap my head around it. I understand. Yeah. I can hold it against you. You know, that's your. Your opinion. You're entitled to it. I. I, I mean, I've watched a lot of fake shit in my years. I get it. <coughs> but that one stands out as like. Yeah. Yeah. Now there was a lot of parts in Superman that I love. Yeah. <coughs> Sorry. And what was it, Superman Two? Well, Superman Two is the superior. With what's her name? No. Superman Two is the one with Zod. Yes. Superman Three. That was the one with Richard Pryor. And he was the redhead. Oh, oh, um. I know what you're talking about. She, um. She wanted to play Ma Kent in Smallville. Um. Yeah, I know you're. I, oh, fuck. Lana Lang. Yeah, she played Lana Lang in. Lana Lang. In Superman 3. Yeah, but that's who I'm talking about. Yeah. I thought she was. Wow. Well, 
She was great. <laughs> That and the scene when he went bowling. I'm pulling this up right now. Annette O'Toole. Okay. Because she played Lana Lang in Superman 3, and then she went on to play uh, <coughs> Martha Kent in uh, Smallville, yeah. which I thought was like a, an interesting twist. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, I like it. And then... Um, I mean, it's not Brewster's Millions, but... Yeah. See, I don't like Superman 3. I didn't care for it that much. Yeah. Like, there are some interesting things in Superman 3 that I like, but overall, like, I think it's, like, it's not that good of a movie. Dumb. But it's not, it's not nearly as bad as Superman 4. No. Like, the quest for peace is in that same range as the movie that <coughs> shall not be named. I know. It's terrible. It is. It is horrifically bad. But, you know, but I've even heard, like, um... Oh, what's his name? The guy who played Ducky. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I can't think of his name. But he, he's talked about in interviews. John Cryer. John Cryer, yeah. Because he ended up <coughs> playing, like, Lex <coughs> Luthor's nephew in that. <coughs> and he said, I, I took this... I took the... Agreed to the movie. I know, I heard this, too. And the script that I read was completely different from the script that we shot. The script that I read was fantastic. And then they started cutting money from it left and right. And so you had to skimp and skimp and skimp and skimp. And now all of a sudden the script's getting changed completely. And you're like, it turned into this complete turd. (laughs) You know. So. There you go. I'd love to read that original script. Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. That'd be cool to read. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we'll see. We shall see. Well, you know what this weekend is. Oh yes, the uh, the furries have defended descended upon uh, downtown Pittsburgh. They have descended. They have descended, and in typical furry weekend, the humidity has jumped <laughs> one thousand oh. percent. All right, it's it's so fucking thick outside. Oh. I can't even imagine this, poor fools. No. <laughs> it sounds like a lot of dehydration and a big vet bill. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to imagine the swamp ass you're getting in that suit. Huh. I can't. And it's funny, you know, this suits cost like five to fifteen thousand dollars. Yeah. And I don't know. I don't know if I can wear something that's ten thousand dollars. It but, just completely yeah. fucking bigfooted. You know what I mean? Yeah. Fuck. There ain't no way. No man. way. <laughs> you know? There is no way. Like, I got nothing against the lifestyle. If that's what you, that's what you, you, you go. At, God bless you. You know. But <clears throat> I mean, like. I'd be looking at like the weather and being like, oh, that the suit is staying at home." Now, is it all? You know, we have to talk about this. Is it all about you know the? It, there are people that go down there just, just as innocent folks dressing as animals, right? Or is there? Is it always that sexual dark side to the first? I don't. <sighs> I think clearly there's a sexual dark side to the furries. All of them? No. Yeah, everybody that goes down there. I don't think everybody, no. Because like I, it, cause it always makes the news, and they're and you know you hear people, oh, they're so cute, and this, that, and the other. And yeah. They make it sound so innocent. And I was like, well, there is another side that yeah. you're not seeing. <coughs> I, 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 de- I definitely believe that there 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 is, like, Somebody who believes that that about them, like you know, I, I'm I'm a furry, I'm a I'm a I'm a cushy, whatever they call themselves. I don't know. Furry's all I know for sure. I know they have other terms. No, oh, really? Yeah. Um, depending on what level they are or something, I'm not quite sure. The, you know, so that's all in the Scientology chart. Um, <coughs> but 
<clears throat> like at the same time, like I don't believe like everybody's down there is just like you know. And so, where are we having the orgy? Yeah, I don't. I can't be, dude. There no, like be. I, I believe there are people who like. If like, I, I believe there are some people who I'm sure it's a very sexual experience. I'm, I'm sure there are other people who it is. Is just their lifestyle. Like this is how I am. This is what I believe. This is you know, I I am a a wolf. I am a puppy. I, whatever whatever it is. I don't know, but you know. I, I guess just how they want to live their life, but I also believe that there is a clearly there is a deviant side to it as well. Yeah, yeah. You know that got popularized by MTV. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, but <laughs> but I gotta feel like that's like not the majority. That's probably the minority. Okay, yeah, yeah. I'm just asking that smart question. Yeah, at least I believe that. Like you know. Because I can't believe, like, well, it's a big deal. Like, I can't believe, like, the news would be, like, well, these sexual deviants are in town. Let's give them a hand. Yeah. yeah. You know. That's like, you know, on the news, I was like, you know, they're talking about the weather. And he says, you know where I went the other night? I went to Beavers. That was a great place. And when I was done, I went right over to the adult bookstore. <laughs> what a fantastic shop. Yeah. Loved it. Yeah. Loved it. Loved the tokens. The yeah. booths were great. The glory hole was phenomenal. Yeah, that's yeah. what I mean. Like, yeah. So, you know, I mean, like, I, ha- I have to hope to believe that that's the minority of this convention. You right. know what I mean? So, but I'm I'm glad they come to Pittsburgh. I'm glad to support the city. You're right. It's a bit, it's, the city does well. Yeah. From that. You know what I mean? We welcome them with open arms every year. They'll have the big parade tomorrow. Yeah, I mean, there's never any... You know. We do welcome them with open arms. We do. We don't, like... But I guess... You never hear, hear about any real crimes or anything? No, like you, you never hear about, like, the debauchery. No. Not at all. No. But I mean, like at the same time, like all in all, I think when it comes down to it, for the most part, I, I think Pittsburgh is a relatively safe city. Relatively, relatively. You know what I mean? I, I think there are parts, yeah, that are bad, but but I think the other side of that too is like I have no doubt that like if you had a San Diego Comic Con. If you're in the know, there is debauchery taking place. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like, you, but you don't hear about it. Right. But I'm sure that there there is a subculture of that where, like, you know, there's a specific hotel that is specifically for yeah, that's, that's cosplay like, orgies. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I, I have no doubt about that. Like, you know, but you don't hear about that. Like, just I'm sure with this, I'm sure there is, like, you know, Hey, yeah, um, we've got floor twelve at the Westin, and uh, yeah, that is uh, bottoms optional. <laughs> this is the tails off club. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I mean, like, I'm sure there's shit like that that takes place in both communities. <laughs> you know what I mean? But it's just it's not <laughs> publicized. The only way to recognize them is if their tail is pinned to one side of their costume. Yeah, then, yeah. Then you know. But I mean, like you know, tomorrow, like you know, families will take their children. Like I, I, that's what I mean. Yeah, like it, it, it's like, and you know, I'd hate to you know imagine that you know the night before that dog my my small child is petting was uh, you know, <laughs> covered in DNA, shall we say? Yeah. <laughs> Took a lot of red rockets. <laughs> one paw, one paw has shit on it. It's not his. <laughs> oh, yeah. Mommy, what's that smell? <laughs> yeah, so, I mean... He can't go to the bathroom there. <laughs> Yuck. 
Yuck indeed. <laughs> I could just I could just see them like in that parade and like being so fucking hot, like this plume of stench. Yeah. Like a Batman movie. Oh. Just rolling through the street. Yeah. Following them. Yeah. You know, like a Joker bullet. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like, I mean, people stink when it, when they're marching in the summer period. Yeah. Put some fur on them. Good gravy. Yeah, that's brutal. Yeah. But they still act happy and they still act on their own. Yeah. But I'm not I mean, knocking them. It's just, it's just a side that I don't understand. So, right, I mean, but, some of it I don't understand. Right. And Others like, I do. I mean, I get cosplay. I think my kids cosplay. We yeah. cosplayed before. Yeah. It's not really. You know, we've been cosplaying since we were six. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, like, I guess it's going to that other level that not concerns me, just curiosity. Like, yeah. Let's, why? I, I guess I want to know the questions behind right. what they do, the psychology of why you need to, you know, dress like a pirate wolf. I don't know. I don't know. But, like, also, like, I've never been inside the convention. So, like, I wonder, like, oddly, like, how much furry erotica is there? Yeah. You know? Or if it's just not like that. If it, yeah, it's not like that at all. I won't go in. I mean, that's something you're going to have to do on your own. I, I can't do it myself. I can't. Like I can't. Come I've out. thought about it. I'll, I'll be honest. like the sheer curiosity aspect of it has had me wonder. Like maybe I should go check this out. Like get a one day, go down on a Saturday or something, and I just can't pull that trigger. I just don't think I can get in there. No, I know you can't. I would never ask you to. I, like there is one thing. There is one thing I would never ask you to do is go off of that cliff. <clears throat> I have seen you at college football games <laughs> tracking the mascots. Yeah, I just I don't like it. I know. So, like, this is like your worst nightmare. <laughs> and I just don't think I can, uh... Yeah. I think also, too, is I wouldn't be in di- going in any kind of costume. Right. So I so feel how like much the, would I stick out? The fucking targets on my back. Yeah. So I would get like all the looks. Right. If they're looking at me. I'm the weirdo. Yes. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Like, and I don't know if I can handle that. Because then I would be getting stared at fucking constantly. It'd right. Like a Twilight Zone episode or something. Yeah. I'd be mean, like, I can't. This yeah. Is... No, I get that. I mean, you see people dressed up at con and stuff like that, but. It, there's not many furries there. No. You know what I mean? You know, there's a guy here and there. I remember the one year with, at, like, Steel City Corner, the guy was wearing, like, the horse head. Yeah. I that, that you were just like, get, get, I, get, I can't be near that I know, that my guy. kid got a horse head upstairs. Yeah. I'm like, like you're right, I can't be near that guy. Like, every time you saw <laughs> him, he turned it with the other direction. Yeah. It's this whole thing. Yeah. 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 Uh, I can't on. It's just, I don't know, man. There's just something about it. Right. I'm better with monsterish type of things than I am with, like, real animals. Yeah. Real animals, like, really terrify the shit out of me. Right. If it's like some kind of beast or monster, I'm okay with it. But that's the difference. That's the odd thing that's the difference is if you see somebody in a Chewbacca costume... Yeah, I'm all in. You are all in. Yeah. But it's like, what's the difference between a Chewbacca costume... And the, the puppy pirate. I don't, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I know. I, I just can't. I, but that's the, 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 like, that is the thing. Like, I, I mean, you put someone in a sheep's head and walk them around in some kind of weird-ass costume, I'm fucking pissing my pants. Yeah. I can't handle that shit. Right. Or a dog's head or... Oh, God. Yeah. I, I just... It's too much. Right. Or a clown. Yeah. But that's the, th- that's the thing, like... There is no difference between a guy dressed as Chewbacca or as a Wookiee as compared to one of these furry people. It's just 
Chewbacca's from Star Wars and say you give him the pass? Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I'm just like, I'm just put, like looking at it from like all different perspectives. Yeah, I don't know? understand the psychology of my. Yeah. Madness. Like yeah. Rock the Panther bothers you. It does. You know, but the small child dressed as Wicket the Ewok, you're okay with. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know why I'm wrong. Rock, rock the Panther just looks weird. So it is a nitty lion. Yeah. I don't know, it's just weird. Well, I mean, the one that really freaked you out the most was the Syracuse Orange. Yeah, that was weird, too. That one, you were like, what the fuck? Yeah, what <laughs> like, you, like, that? audibly, like, what the fuck? Yeah, I don't like that either. Yeah. I didn't know that was going to be here. I didn't like Steely McBean either. And yeah. I think there's a hatred of that mascot. But there, there is. Like, that mascot. Like, I don't know why they keep that around. I, yeah, that's just embarrassing. It is. Like, Steely McBeam is embarrassing. They need to fucking retire that. Yeah. No mascot. You're, and, you're okay with Iceberg, though? Of course, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I love Iceberg. I don't know why. Yeah. Pirate Parrot? Doesn't bother me. Kenny the Kangaroo? I'm okay with. Yeah. Because I knew the girls that used to be in Kenny the Kangaroo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, it doesn't bother me because there's a connection. Not now, but I mean, like... Yeah. I knew people that were inside of Kenny, so yeah. I... That didn't come out right. Well... <laughs> <laughs> Here's a fun I wasn't story. inside of Kenny. Yeah. Here's a fun story about that, though. Huh. One time I was at Kennywood. And, like, there's a goof. I went and I hugged Kenny Kangaroo. Kenny Kangaroo grabbed my ass. <laughs> I was taken aback by that because I thought it was a dude in Kenny the Kangaroo. Nice. I did not know it was a hot chick. Nice. And the assistant was trying to explain that to me as I was like, okay, hey, Kenny, thanks. Like, the assistant was like trying to like, hey, she's in the, like, no, 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 we're done. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. little did I know. It was a chick. Spoiled opportunity. <laughs> Dummy. Yeah. Yeah. Now Jeter's on the other hand. Huh? <laughs> Just what? Jeter's on the other hand. Jeter's? No. From Kenny Wood? Oh, okay. oh yeah, okay, yeah, I, I do that. That's creepy. Yeah. <laughs> I forgot weird. about him. Yeah. yeah. I don't know why. I, I, maybe it's something from like when I was young, young, like five, yeah. four or five with like HR Puff and stuff and shit. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know either. It has to be something from the Croft people because they were fucked up anyway. Oh. Those those motherfuckers were on so much acid <laughs> when they wrote all of that shit. Yeah, dude. Like H.R. Puff and stuff, Sigmund the Sea Monster, all of that stuff. The, 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 the uh, or the, the Sundays. The, 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 banana the banana splits. Yeah, the banana splits. Yeah, like them, like all that shit's fucked up. Oh, that movie terrified me. Yeah, when it, that that that, re- that, that horror, horror movie. movie yeah. yeah, I was like, yeah, because that's like buying right into every single one of your deepest fears. <laughs> yeah, I know. Like you really want to fuck with me? You do an HR Puff and stuff horror movie. Oh. Yeah. oh. Like, you turn Witchy Poo into the hero. Because H.R. Puff and stuff is like, you know, this horrific evil <laughs> drag. Oh, I mean, oh, you could just. I'd be done. They did one with. Uh, was that the. Ban- I guess that was the Banana Splits one. I thought they did with, like, something with, like, showbiz pizza characters. Well, I know they did the one. It was like a, a knockoff of Five Nights at Freddy's with Nicolas Cage. Yeah. But now they, they're releasing the Five Nights at Freddy movie. Yeah, yeah. I saw the trailer for that. Yeah. That looks interesting if you're into that. Yeah. But yeah, I, I think they did like, the, there was one of Nicolas Cage where he has like five lines in the entire movie, which is like shocking. <laughs> I don't know, man. Yeah. It's just 
you know what though? And it's funny because I I got through the terrifying movies. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Huh? I I don't. But you, I, you fucking sit me down in a circus. I mean, All the right. day no we no way. The day you, me, and Lisa watch the Scorpion King two. And the Minotaur shows up in the middle of it. You actually got up and walked out of the room. It's fucking frightening. You were just like, fuck it, I'm out. I'm done. You tapped. Yeah, it's shit like that. Yeah. And that Greek. Yeah. Yeah, dude. I cannot. Like, Medusa doesn't bother me, but you can see she's beautiful, right? Yeah. Aside from the snakes, yeah. Yeah. But, like, the Minotaur. I didn't even like those fuckers in Harry Potter. Yeah. And they, because they, the centaurs, the centaurs were, yeah, yeah. but that, but that, um, uh, the effects were not good on those first centaurs. No, they're, they're like, you know, yeah. like it was just kind of like, yuck, yuck. Yeah. I couldn't deal. That, that was almost Scorpion King esque. Yeah, I just like, couldn't deal with that, that. That rock scorpion at the end of. Oh, that was terrible. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The end of the Mummy Two. That, that thing shows up. Horrible. I mean, that had, like, PlayStation 2-like graphics. How did that even make the pass? I have no idea. None. I... But there it was, in all of its fucking glory. Yeah, I just never understood that about The Mummy. You had The Mummy, which was such a great movie. Yeah. It really was. Like, and at least if you're going to do a sequel, make it good. You know what I mean? And there are parts of that movie that are very good. Yeah. But it's just the ending is so ass, and you throw in that horrific CGI scorpion rock hybrid. Yeah. That just looks awful. Yeah. Yeah. The first Mummy was awesome. Oh, that's an amazing movie. It felt like Indiana Jones. It, it had... Everything you want in a movie like that. Yeah, it was very Spielbergish. Yeah, it had like every it had everything you wanted like that. Yeah, you know it was very Spielbergish, Howardish. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it was very wow. This and it kept, it kept going. It had a great soundtrack to it. Yeah, like the music was fantastic. Everything about that movie is amazing. Yeah, that first Mummy movie with Brendan Fraser, top notch. Yeah. It was, it was awesome. Yeah. Had a good plot. The yeah. The story was good. And the ending was a little bit of a, you know, um, not, surprise is not what I'm looking for. Right now. Twist. Twist a little bit yeah. with her being, yeah. you know. Yeah. It's great. Yeah. I like the mummy. Yeah. Like, I don't know. You just respected him as a bad guy. Yeah, you know that was cool. Yeah, that was a lot, lot to love. Time in that period movie. piece. Yeah, it was beautiful. Yeah, good movie. All right. Top notch, Brendan Fraser. That dude's always top notch. He is, but I'm saying like that was like the height of Fraser mania. You know. Yeah. Like at that I, point, agreed. Like, but I mean, like, you know, he had the, he was like you know George of the Jungle. He was uh. Um, what was it in the Canadian Encino Man? Well, he was Encino Man before that, but like he had done George of the Jungle, he had done a uh, um, uh, the Mountie. Oh, yeah. yeah, I can't remember the name of the character. Snotty Whiplash was the villain. Yeah, I know. yeah. Um, he did that. Like he, like he was on a roll there for. He, he did the blast in the past. Like, he was on a real roll there, and, like, the mummy was, like, the height of, like, Fraser mania. Yeah, that's where he fucked himself up, though. Yeah. Yeah, but hopefully he's making a comeback with this Oscar win. Yeah. The guy does all the flowers. Good, he's good people. Yeah, he is. He is. He is good people. He is. All right, let's wrap this bad boy up. Yeah. Anything like to add to the proceedings there, sir? Oh, man, I'm good. Well, remember, there are a number of different ways you can reach out and touch us. Hey. 
I send us an email. And our email address is pittsburghnerd at yahoo.com. You can also find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Mastodon. Just search Pittsburgh Nerd Podcast. We're very, very easy to find. We are on a number of podcasting networks. You can find us on the Tangent Bound Network, the Weeby Geeks Network, and the Pod Breed Network. Uh, just give them a Google search. You'll find all the other great podcasts <coughs> they have to offer. And lastly, as always, we want to thank you, dear listener, for putting up with Ian's coughing each and every week. We can't thank you enough for that. I uh, no, but putting up with, up with us and enjoying what we do, we can't thank you enough for that. And uh, on that note, the dreamer has awakened. Peace.